Okay, so basically last thing on the O2 Jetta project before we can get a safety done is to get these wipers swapped out and get a new windshield put in it. I'm not sure if you can see the camera. I got a lot of glare, but there is a crack right across the metal of it. So uh, my wipers broke. Obviously I got one pointing upward and the other one in the normal position, it still works, but the linkage underneath is broken. So we get the wipers off today and get the plastic cowl removed uh, as I'm gonna take the car to get the windshield replaced tomorrow night after work. So I'll show you how we get the wiper arms off and away we go. So if your wiper arms are proper original and haven't been you know, messed around with, then there are little plastic caps on both arms that cover the fastener that holds the arm on. So because this one is upright, I might have to Oh, and it won't move now. So there is a little notch. Don't know if you can see because we got sun in the way. There's a little notch there. That's where you're supposed to put the screwdriver in. Of course, I can't do that with the cowl here, so I'll try it, but I might have to go in from the side. You don't want to pry too much on this cowl. It won't take much. It's only plastic. Oh, there it goes. So there's one. And the other one here. That. So keep those set them aside, you don't want to lose them. And then they are 13 millimeter nuts. The last car I did I had to use this wiper arm puller and uh, even smack it with a hammer after that, so we'll see how miserable this one wants to be this time. Hopefully it'll come off relatively easily for us. It's usually a good practice to leave the nut kind of flush on the end of the shaft if you're going to have to use a puller, but because there's very little thread to work with on this one in the first place, you can't really do that. And just looking at it, it's rather rusty, so I'm sure we're going to have fun on that one. At least this one doesn't look quite as bad. And it undid a little easier, so we'll see. I haven't decided whether I'm going to just swap these arms all together. Someone got blue overspray all over them, so they don't look very good. So that one's got some rust too, but we'll try the puller here and see how things go. Definitely not much room to work on the arms here because of the cowl, obviously, so you just have to kind of gently flex the cowl enough that you can get the puller tool around the bottom of the arm and on far enough that it isn't just going to slip when you go to try and tighten it up. And then we're just going to try... Try a little bit of gentle tightening on this. You're probably going to have to try and hold the puller as well because it's going to try and move all over the place when you start to tighten it. Mine's already walking off the side, of course. It's not a very good design, but work with what you got. We're in luck. 
rock actually, it looks like just with that small amount of force on the racket. I don't know if you can see, the sun is working against me always. There's a little bit of uh, rust powder that's accumulated there and the wiper's a little crooked, so I think we've accomplished what we're after here. So I'll get that out of there and hopefully the cowl's still intact. It looks like it's okay. This one's in good shape except for a little bit on the edge, which is fairly normal. I'm gonna tip this up so it's not fighting me and then you can lift it off just like that. And the most important part about reassembly, which I'll touch on when we get to that, is the spline inside here and the spline inside there need to be absolutely clean. The last car I had the windshield done, I got the glass placed to reassemble the cowl and the arms. And then when it came to winter time, one of the wipers happened to be a little bit stuck and uh, I hit the wiper to clear the windshield and it, the driver's side one stayed put and the passenger side one went over top of it. And then I was able to twist the wiper arm on the post. So he put it on in between splines and tightened it up and screwed the whole thing up. So when you're putting it back together, always make sure the splines are clean, put a little bit of anti-seize or, or other lubricant on them and always put them together all the way bottomed by hand and then put the nut on. Don't use the nut to pull it on. So that's one wiper done. And I'll try exactly the same thing on the passenger side one here, which is a lot harder to reach, of course. But the puller fits on it a little better. Of course I say that, but we're not actually anywhere close to the center of the of the stud with the puller, so I'm not sure whether that's just because of the cowl. I'm thinking it must be. So you just have to play it, play it careful if you can get the cowl. If you can get a hand on it to hold it while you tighten it, you might be able to make it work. But mine, of course, looks like it's going to slide right off the... slide right off the post before we even get going. part with this one being that the wiper isn't up is you can't tip it up to remove the arm from the pin and of course it's spring-loaded so you just have to be careful you don't hurt the spline like that bunch more rust dust again same thing make sure the splines are super clean before reassembling so with those out of the way now um, they are different so I don't believe you can put them on wrong. The passenger side one has a bend there, whereas this one is pretty much straight. So next step we got to do is remove the cowl. And to do that, you need to get this hood weather stripping out of the way here first. Fairly gently, it comes off easy. Set it aside. And then I've tried it both ways. I think probably hood down is easier for working uh, to try and get the cowl out. So we'll start there. And what I usually do is uh, a little pry bar. Just 
the little, if you can see it, little pry bar. Now you're going to say, well, a pry bar is going to damage the plastic really quickly. And yes, you're correct. So in doing this, you are going to do a very small amount of, of prying and then you move a little bit down and a very small amount and you move down because yes, it is plastic and it won't take much at all to break it. Way you can physically get it out is to so that's the cowl pretty much all released now. I don't know if it'll focus here, of course, for you to be able to see. It's being very uncooperative. So that's loose on the back side. Pop the hood again. And then with a little bit of gentle persuasion the corners are hooked in the corners are hooked in here basically under the fender a little bit so a little bit of gentle persuasion and fighting with the uh, the uh, wiper post this might be a little challenging so once you get it up over there and out of here then it should be as easy as, and I don't remember if you need to take the cabin air cartridge out of here or not, but I'm going to try without at the moment. So it's looking like it'll definitely make life easier if you take that cabin filter. And with that out of the way, it should be very easy to slide that up. I'm gonna bring the hood down here. So we have the cowl out of the way. And so obviously some tree debris. It looks like we have a freaking mouse making a nest in here too, and it definitely needs a new cabin filter. Um, and while we've got this apart, somewhere in here, there is right here. A broken arm for the wipers. So this is the clunking around I was hearing when the passenger side wiper would operate and the driver side doesn't move. So, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see there. Back over there, that rusty looking arm is supposed to turn the shaft for the driver side wiper. So obviously it's seized in here somewhere. I'm just going to swap the whole mechanism. I have another one out of another car. And so I'm going to go ahead and pull that. I won't show you, but I will just show you here that there's just three bolts that hold it. One there, one down here, and one there. And then the only other thing you have to do uh, is unplug the motor, which is back under here somewhere. One of these two, maybe both have to come out. Um, I guess we'll do it quick while I'm here. They are 10 millimeter hex. So, should be very easy to undo the torque value if you're gonna go by it is very, very, very small.
and so it should just be bolt with a washer for each there is a um, like a rubber bushing that they sit in the wiper mechanism you'll probably notice as you're taking it apart moves a fair bit and that's because it is sitting in rubber that so you should have three and then without further ado the mechanism should so now you can see that plug there is the one for the wiper motor itself and by the looks of it it's a catch on the bottom side it's not going to focus on it for me, of course, but the down on this side, there's one of those ones you pull back on the top and it releases the catch and you can slide the plug off. So I'm going to do that. Like that. Plug is off. And then with a little more wiggling. You can pull the whole wiper mechanism with our rusty arm here out of the car. So that's how I'm going to leave it to do the windshield to get them to replace it. Uh, like I said, I had a bad experience with them putting the window in and reassembling the wipers last time. So I'm not gonna have them do it this time. The weather forecast is supposed to be good, so I'm just gonna take this over to the compressed air, blow it all the debris, and we're pretty much ready for the windshield then. The weather's supposed to be good, so I won't bother with the cowl. Um, if you are leaving the cowl out for an extended period of time and there is gonna be weather, water will go right in that cabin air filter and right into your floor. So if you're going to be leaving it out, either set the cowl back over or figure out how to tarp the car in some way. Okay, so this is the second part of the windshield and windshield wiper video. Uh, today we're going to show you how to clean the ground that's underneath the cowl which is important for many things. If you ever have any issues with the windshield wipers where they're twitching or they don't stop, that ground is one of them. The other ones are under the battery, which we'll maybe do in a future video. Uh, we're gonna use dielectric grease on the motor plug underneath, and we'll show you how to install the pieces and tell you what the torque values are. And then we're gonna put the plastic cowl back in, which is the hardest part of this job without breaking the window. It's very easy if you push too hard to crack the glass. So it's a brand new windshield we got put in earlier this week. So we're gonna definitely try not to crack that and get the cowl back in so that the rain doesn't go inside the car. So we're gonna get going with that. Okay, so this is a wiper mechanism from another car that I stole and we're gonna install it in this one. And the hardest part about this is going to be actually getting the mechanism back down in here without breaking any of the plastic clips or anything that are around here. And not hooking the insulation under it. And the plug for the motor, I think we're going to have to do first because you won't be able to get a hold of it afterwards. So we're going to do that first. Pass me the whole rag with the dielectric in it there. Yeah. So dielectric grease for the plug, just like all the other ones we've done. So I'm going to put this on before we put the mechanism back in here because I don't think you can access it otherwise. So you just put it on and there's a nice satisfying click. You know that it's in all the way. And then now we can tuck this back in here again. Hopefully. line up with three fastener holes in there and we're going to use our sandy dandy anti-seize on these especially again because of weather 
and just general corrosion due to moisture and humidity levels. These ones are still in pretty good shape, these bolts. They still have most of the green coating on them, but we're still gonna use the anti-seeds because it will always make your life easier in the future. That is provided I can get the bolt started. And again, just like everything else, only do Where's the other? I give you the other ones. The other bolts. Oh, yeah. Um, put them all in loosely first. Don't tighten up anything until you have them all in place. And just before we started this video, we looked up in the Bentley service manual. The torque specification for these fasteners is 71 inch pounds, and you can convert that to foot pounds if you want, but it'll be relatively small and chances of finding a foot-pound torque wrench that'll go small enough and be accurate is very slim. So I'm going to use an inch-pound torque wrench, which goes from like 25 to 150 inch-pounds, I think. So it's basically right in the middle of the range, which is what you want to aim for most of the time. Ten millimeter for these bolts. And so to start with, I'm just going to bring them all up to the same tension. I just got the torque wrench on the lowest setting to start with. So yeah, we're going to bring up all three of them just to the lowest. I just got it set to the lowest setting on the torque wrench right now just to try and balance them and then we're going to step our way up to get to the 71. Probably just do it in two steps, 50 and then 71 since this is uh, 25 we're starting at. And we're going to go up to 55 minus 5. And in this case I'm going to start in the middle. Sides. And then the last step up to seventy one. Get to the point where it feels like it's not getting any tighter then i would suggest you stop it's really easy to strip the threads if there's any damage to them at all in the first place so that's why i'm holding it at less than half and if i can't make it click here then you don't bother you just you know that it's not going to come apart but you don't want to strip the threads so the last thing i'm going to do before we can start to put the cowl in is i'm just going to put some black grease underneath these little boots to try and keep the water from going down the posts, which is how they end up seizing up in the first place. So I'm going to go grab the grease and we'll do that and then we can start to work on the cowl. Okay, so I just got some general purpose grease in my grease gun here is the easiest way to get some. So I'm just going to get a little bit out on the finger for each. You don't want a whole bunch because you'll end up with grease everywhere and then the only thing that comes from that is dirt sticking to it. So I'm just going to try and tuck it down where the seam of the shaft and the mount actually is. That's where you want it to be. Hopefully to keep the water out of Something like that. And in this case, I think actually we'll put a bit more on it to try and see if we can get it to squeeze out the 
the little shield boot a bit. So I'll try a little more here and see if we can get that effect without having it everywhere because I want to put anti-seize on the spline and the threads, not grease. Try that. So yeah, got a little bit of a squeeze out effect happening there, which is what we want. So I'll do the same on the other side now. The strip along the bottom of the windshield is relatively clean still because I just had the window put in uh, Tuesday morning. anything with it. It's got a little bit of water in it because of course it rained while we were getting set up to go here. Uh, so the only thing I'm going to do is use some Windex glass cleaner to clean the part of the towel that goes into that strip which is this rib here which as you can see is full of dirt and debris. When I took the car apart the towel wasn't even really snapped in all the way across. It was kind of just sitting there for the most part. So if it's like that, obviously you're not keeping the water out. And this is the cabin filter and that goes right down into the floor. So if you don't have anything shielding that, you'll be water right in your floor and then you're rotting the car away for fun. So I'm just gonna do a bit of glass cleaner here to start and start by just pinching on the plastic rib here. That's the most important part. It has to pop into that bottom window seam. You can see the dirt on that. 